for Unit 8, Day 5, and they start on page 16 of your packet. Uh, again, I'm recommending color pencils. Um, it's just easier when we color code things when we're dealing with area. It helps uh, kind of make things pop. Um, okay, so we're still talking about the area of regions between two curves. And um, so we're still working with the same essential question. How is integration used to find the area between the two curves? Um, so this, this, um, these notes are focusing on when the curves intersect in more than two points. So obviously they need to, if it's an enclosed region, they need to at least intersect at the beginning and the end, but they might intersect somewhere in the middle. And so we're gonna still follow this procedure, although we really downplayed finding points of intersection um, yesterday, so, or in uh, day four. So um, this is really gonna be our focal point here, not to be punny, but um, that's really what we're gonna have to focus on. So uh, we're gonna start first with a no calculator question. So it's the question quite, plainly is find the area of the region bounded by the graph. So bounded means that these graphs are gonna create enclosed regions. So the first thing we need to do is really kind of get a sketch for these things. Um, and of course, if they're gonna form enclosed regions, we wanna know where they intersect. And where they intersect, that means their X and Y coordinates are the same. So we're gonna take these two functions and find the points of intersection by taking those two functions and setting them equal to each other. And if they ask you to do this with a calculator, it's going to be something that is factorable. So kind of go on those lines. It should not be this monumental computational thing. All right, so just kind of scanning this, it looks like I got an X squared on both sides, so we can cancel those out. And um, and I'm, so I'm going to, I see a negative 2X cubed, so I'm going to take everything to the left. I don't like that negative sign. So this is going to become positive. This is going to be subtracted from this. So it looks like we have 2x cubed minus 8x equals zero. And like I said, when, when they have you do this without a calculator, it's always factorable. It's, it should be, the, the computation shouldn't be that bad. So I'm scanning this, um, like obviously I can take out at least an x and that's what I do. I don't even take out the two and that's okay. Uh, it'll be divided out here when I set this equal to zero. Okay, so, so I have it factored, at least that's how I chose to factor it. Um, so I'm gonna set each one of these factors equal to zero. So X equals zero. So we know point of, a point of intersection is when X is equal to zero. And then we gotta set this equal to zero. So I'm gonna set this equal to zero, take eight to the other side, divide by that two finally, square root it, that means I'm gonna get plus or minus two. So we know we have points of intersection at zero. And when X is equal to zero, I'm just gonna pick this one to find the Y coordinate because it's easier. So when x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. So here's a point of intersection. Notice I've kind of made this point a striped point. It's part orange, part blue, because it's on both functions. Um, and then x equals plus and minus two. So now I gotta come here. When x is equal to two, this is four plus eight, it's 12. So we have two comma 12. And when it's, e and it's, when, it, when it's equal to negative two, this is still four, because we're squaring a negative. Four minus eight, which is negative four. So we have negative two, negative four, and positive two, 12. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of guesstimating where those would be because I'm counting by fives here. So we know that those are the three points of intersection. So um, now we need to sketch this. So, you know, I really can't rely on a calculator here because it's no calculator problem. So looking at the blue functions, I know this is a, a parabola, right? It's a quadratic. So it looks like it does something like this, right? We can kind of see that, that concave up section here between these points of intersection. So I'm gonna do my best sketch here and it goes off the page and that's okay. All right, so there's the quadratic. This is a cubic. And this is a little trickier, right? But we know it's going to be, um, you know, something like, psh, 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 or maybe backwards, psh, 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 right? So which one is it? That's the big question. So um, to, in order to kind of figure that out, we can do a couple of things. You can remember that a negative in front of the leading term, the term with the biggest power, uh, flips the, the general parent function. 
So it's, it's not this, it's this. Um, or you can just, you know, look at this and say, hey, I've got one and negative one, and those numbers are pretty easy to deal with. I can stick a one and negative one in here and get some intermediate points. And that's what I'm, I think I'm going to do here. So when I put in one here, I have 12 plus one, that's 13, minus two, that's 11. So I should be about right here. And then um, put a negative one in here. Let's see, negative one. This is negative 12. This is still plus one. So negative 12 plus one is negative 11. And this becomes positive two because Q being a negative is negative times negative two. So negative 12 plus one is negative 11. Minus two is negative 13. So that means I'm down here. So I must do something like something like that. So there we go. Oh, I, I, I actually, I, I calculated it wrong. I was just looking at this value right here. Negative 12 plus one is negative 11 plus two is negative nine. There we go, negative nine. Now, even if you went down a little too far in your sketch there and, and made the same mistake I made, and call that negative 11, it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, you have the same, you, you'd have the same basic shape. Uh, okay, so we know that the enclosed regions then um, are here and here. So we've got two regions that are kind of intersections inside the domain of the endpoints. And so that complicates our expression for, um, for area, because we know that when we use that expression for area, which is, well, I guess I didn't do the original expression, let me let that disappear. But when we do that, that expression for area back in, in uh, day four, <clears throat> we know that the, those expressions apply across um, a region of the domain where we always have the same function on top and the, diff and the, and the other function on the bottom. In other words, the, the day four was they couldn't crisscross and now they're crisscrossing. And so we swap functions. Now this orange function is the bigger functions on top and the blue functions on the bottom. All right, so let me let this reappear here. So um, if we look at this, this expression then is from negative two to zero. So it's this part of the domain, the blue functions on top. So I have blue function minus orange function, orange functions on the bottom. And that represents just that area as I sweep from negative two to zero. Um, so it's just part of it. So this is how we're going to be efficient about this, because we're doing this by hand and we don't want to do more than we have to. We're going to go ahead and work this problem for this area, just for this region. I probably should have named this region like R or something. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So um, blue minus orange, quadratic minus cubic, what does that give us? Well, I have x squared minus x squared. Those go away. I have a 4x minus 12x, that's a negative 8x. And I have minus a negative 2x cubed. So it looks like I've got a minus 8x plus 2x cubed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and integrate this. So this is 2 times x to the power over 4 minus 8 times x squared over 2. I'm going to leave the limits off for just a second here. I want to clean this up. So this is x to the fourth over 2 after I reduce, and this is minus 4x squared. Now I put the limits back on. Okay. So now I can go ahead and plug in my upper limit, which is zero, and then subtract and plug in my lower limit, which is negative two. This whole thing is zero. That's nice, we can ignore that. Um, and then, so let's look at this other set of brackets here. <clears throat> okay, so negative two to the fourth. So we know it's gonna be positive. So two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So this top is 16. 16 divided by two is eight. So this whole thing is eight. Now let's look at this. This is four times four is 16. So I have eight minus 16. So eight minus 16 is negative eight. And then I got a negative out front. So my area, always positive, right? Area is always positive. My area is eight. Okay. So when we're subtracting, when we're subtracting curves, we know that we call the duty top curve minus bottom curve, bigger y's minus littler y's, uh, we've always got positive value. Um, that's not true for regular integration when we're going back to the axis. Sometimes we have a negative region. 
Uh, okay, so that is just this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to change the screen. So um, if you need to pause and get that down, go ahead and do that now. But I'm going to uh, switch screens so we can talk about this next region. Okay, so I'm assuming you've gotten that all written down. This is everything you just wrote down pertaining to this region. Now I want to talk about this region. I want to be efficient about this because a, a lot of this work, it pertains to this region as well. So let's start back with this original expression, right? Blue minus orange, because blue is on top and orange is on the bottom. Now let's take a look at what happens in this next region here, this next region from zero to positive two. We just flip, right? Orange is now on top and blue is now on the bottom, which means from the standpoint of writing this expression, this goes here and this goes here, and then we update our limits of integration. Okay, so the nice thing is that, let me make that disappear. Um, so we have from zero to two, and then we have orange minus blue. But if we do orange minus blue, all we're doing is changing the signs here. So really we have this, but it's eight X minus two X cubed. And if that's the case, then this integration is the same and the simplifying is the same. We're just flipping these two terms. So really I can ignore all this and go right to this and just flip these two terms and put on my new limits of integration from zero to two. So that's a huge time saver. Don't go back and reintegrate everything. You've already integrated all that stuff. Um, and as long as you're really confident that you've integrated correctly, um, just grab this, switch them and put on your new limits of integration. And then we can go ahead and evaluate that. I'm going to plug in two for the upper limit, and I'm going to subtract and plug in zero for the lower limit. This is all zero, so we can forget about that. No trig functions or anything scary like that. Okay, so here we've got two squared. This is four but, uh, times four is a 16. This is minus eight, right? We, we know this is 16 and eight. Uh, this is all positive. So 16 minus eight, this happens to be eight again. So these areas are the same. So we got to bring it all together now. Our total area is 16. So some efficiencies there when we're working without a calculator uh, are really helpful. All right, let's take a look at um, an example uh, where we get to work with a calculator. Okay, so more complicated functions. That shouldn't make us nervous though because we get a calculator here. We've got some decimals. We're okay with that. All right, so it says let R and S be the, uh, first let's start at the beginning. Let F and G be the following functions. F of X is one plus two X plus E to the minus two X. And g of x is x to the fourth minus 6.5x squared plus 6x plus 2. Let r and s be the regions enclosed by the two curves. Find the sum of the areas of the regions of r and s. Okay, so we haven't labeled these yet. I'm just going to arbitrarily call that r and that s. And again, we have a point of intersection inside the enclosed regions, right? We're making two enclosed regions here. We have got crisscrossing occurring. This is cool. All right, so we need the points of intersection. Well, we have to use a calculator. I should have put a little calculator logo up there. I'm sorry about that. Um, we need the points of intersection and we can use a calculator. So I'm gonna get my calculator out here. There we go. And I'm gonna put in, I've already got my calculator formatted. So that's green and red, just the same color coding as I have here. That's the really nice thing about the CE. Uh, okay, so up here, uh, my green function is the exponential. It's definitely exponential. This is definitely polynomial looking. Um, okay, so my first function is one plus two x, one plus two x plus e to the power of negative two x. There we go. All right, next one. There's that polynomial. There it is. Um, x to the fourth power. And then let's get out of that power. Minus 6.5x squared plus 6x plus 2. There we go. So um, let's set up this window. Let's see. Let's take some cues from what we see here in our picture. Looks like my window should go from negative 1 to maybe just beyond 2. So maybe negative 1 to 3. 0 to, let's call it 6. So let's, I think I have that window set here. Negative one to three, zero to six. I already graphed this, so I had the window set up ahead of time. All right, so let's graph this. 
So there we go. And we've got something that looks pretty much like that. Okay. So um, we need these three points of intersection. So we're going to, tracing is not, let, let's just talk about tracing, right? Tracing is when we do this and we just kind of let this cursor float. Notice the cursor is not connected to any function in particular, right? It's just kind of floating there. And, you know, you might think, oh, I can get close enough, right? Just by doing this, this takes a long time, by the way. It doesn't take this long to do a exact value, right? So you probably could guess that that's zero comma two, okay? Um, in fact, it is. We're gonna we're gonna do a second count, but look at my look at my values down here. If I use my trace, I never get the exact value. And if you use any of those two decimal values, you'll get the wrong answer. And it'll be far enough off that you lose your answer point, and you probably will lose your limit your upper bound point too. Okay. Um, so careful about that. So this is why we always do a second calc, and then we use one of these functions. In this case, we want to use the intersect function. Okay. Now notice that when we use our arrows, it's snapping to a function. Okay. The calculator knows it's going to have to do some calculations here. Okay. So first curve is my green curve. I'm going to hit enter. Second curve is my red curve. Notice how it hops. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to arrow to the left here just to get close. Closer you are, the less it takes to guess, the less time it takes to guess. All right, so look at what we have here. X equals 2.232E negative 15. Now think about this, 2.232 is out here. So the E to the minus 15 means it's really 0. 0.000000000000222. Okay, that's basically X equals zero. That's just the calculator is doing um it's kind of approaching it from both sides and doing an approximation and it's not smart enough to round that to zero so zero comma two is our first point of intersection all right so we're going to do the next point of intersection so seconds calc intersect let's pick this one over here so i'm going to hit first curve is green enter second curve is red enter it always picks them in that order because it always picks y1 and y2 um, guess, eh, we're close enough. I'm just going to hit enter. There's my second point of intersection. 0 0.8601. I'm going to keep an extra decimal place. Um, and then 2.8992742. You don't have to write this down. They'll pop up on the PowerPoint when we're uh, back in that. All right, let's hit the third one. Second calc intersect. And I'm going to go along that green function. And I'm going to, first curve is my guess, that's my green. Second curve guess is my red. Uh, second curve select, excuse me, I said that wrong. My guess, and I'm probably still close enough. There we go. And so here's my third point of intersection. 2.087532, and then 5.19, and other stuff. Okay, so we those are our points of intersection. So obviously the X values are what we need here to set up our upper and lower limits for our expressions. So um, let's just recap what those are. So that was zero comma two. Now, we, we, I think we can be relatively confident to, to get this one by inspection. We really didn't have to do a second calc intersect there. And we can kind of look up here and say, hey, when x is equal to zero, g of x is two. When x is equal to zero, f of x is one plus one, right? E to the zero is one. Those are those tricky things. Also, trigonometric functions are tricky like that. So this is two. Um, so you might not have to do that with the calculator, but it's not bad to confirm it. Okay, so this next point of intersection is, um, I'm gonna call it a comma b, because I like, this is clean when I write, write things, and as long as you define a comma b as this, then you can use a and b in your expressions and you get point support. So um, it's, it's efficient. Uh, that way you're only writing these decimal points once. Um, and then this last point of intersection is, I'm going to call that CD. Um, no relationship to the CDs we were working with on day four. Just next two things in the alphabet, letters in the alphabet. Okay, so there are those points of intersection. And again, notice I, I kept an extra decimal place on my X. Um, that's just to help me get more accurate with my answer. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the general setup here. Right, the set it up, the do not solve question. 
Okay, this is kind of cool. So if we stick with what we did um, back in the example one, just what we did by hand, we would set up in a integral for region R, right, with red minus green, and then we would set up a region for or an expression for region S, which was green minus red. And we would adjust our limits of integration accordingly. This is cool though. If we have a calculator, we can set this up using the absolute values and it will give us, and we can go all the way across. We don't care how many times we intersect. So we can have like a sign function and intersect these things a million different times. Just take the, the left endpoint and the right endpoint. So the left endpoint is zero. The right endpoint is this 2.876. I'm going to call it C because it's cleaner. And we're going to do an absolute value of those functions. And in fact, since we have those functions in our calculator, we needed to do that to get these points. We're going to use our bars key again so that this is really slick in the graphing calculator. And that will give us our overall total of R plus S. So this is, this is really slick. And this is why they ask you these types of questions. Set up but do not solve. This is where the points are, right? A point for this. A point for the absolute values, but I'm not a point for the absolute values, but the integrand, and it has to have the absolute values because that's the critical thing to getting the answer right. A point for your limits and a point for your integration in your DX. All right, so let's set this up on the calculator. So second quit, math nine. We're going to go from zero to that rightmost x coordinate, which is 2.0876. 2.0876. And then I'm just going to pause here, go back to my y equals. I'm going to put this minus this, so y1 minus y2 in absolute value. All right, back to the calculation screen. Get over there to my integrand location. There we go. Do a math number, absolute value, to get my absolute values there. And then I want to grab my y1. So remember, that's the bars key y bars function y1 minus now i have to go grab y2 bars y bars function y2 really slick and then x is the variable with which these two are written with respect to and when i hit enter my area for r plus s is 2.760 that's cool. We're going to stop grading. And then if you want to include these, you can. We just have to be correct. So the total area. And um, so this from 0 to C would be the graded setup, but do not solve. So a couple of things. Um, one, you actually technically would get the points for this because in the problem stem, f of x has been defined and g of x has been defined. So, um, and you could, and if they weren't defined, you could define them as f of x and g of x, and this could be your whole uh, setup for do not solve answer, and it would be, it would get you all the points. Um, otherwise, you could put the functions in here, and you could even put the numeric value up here, and then this would be also 100% correct. All right, so the total area then is the area of r plus s, and it's important to note that this is the total area somehow, either r plus s or area total or something like that, 2.76. Uh, okay, so when we get back into the classroom, we'll go over the takeaways for day five and um, work on some topic questions.